Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I've learned as I've grown into the person that I am today. And I have had such a relaxing day. I woke up a little bit late today, and um, I went and got my coffee. I've been drinking a ton of water. Somebody asked me um, in a Q&A the other day why, and I talked about this in my vlog last night, why I'm trying to drink so much water in um, 2020. Well, First of all, I'm trying to lose some weight, and I have been trying to lose weight forever, but um, I'm trying to make, you know, lifestyle changes and lose weight and things like that. The other thing is, I think we all know that water is just better for us than other, like, sodas and things like that, and that it's really healthy for us to drink a lot of water. I'm not going to try to educate anybody on that. I, obviously, my level of knowing a lot about nutrition and fitness is very low, um, <clears throat> but I read this article, um, I don't, God, it was like six or seven years ago. And the reason I know that is because we are going to uh, a friend's wedding in February, and I remember talking to her about um, the article because she drank tons and tons of water, and at the same time, I had read the book, um, Skinny Bitch, I don't know if anybody's read it, Skinny uh, Bitch and Skinny Bastard, and they are books that are uh, about veganism and vegetarianism and things like that and healthy lifestyle changes, and they're fantastic. They're kind of in your face um, if you're looking for books that um, you want to make some changes nutrition wise, but she had recommended the books to me and I read them. But at the same time, so she and I talked a lot about like nutrition and things like that. But at the time I read this article about this woman <clears throat> that had done nothing, but I'm sure the article is still out there and I'm sure people are like, say, oh, she's a fake and it didn't really happen and whatever. But she did nothing but uh, drank a gallon of water every day for 30 days. And I think in like 30 days she lost, it may have been longer than that, it may have been like 60 days or something, but she lost like 20 pounds, her skin cleared up. They showed pictures of her over time, like of how her skin cleared up from just drinking a lot of water. And I always think about that. You know, my husband is somebody, he like rarely ever drinks soda. And he, I mean, he might every once in a blue moon, but he literally drinks water all the time. He always have, has ever since I've known him. So... You know, there's a lot of health benefits to drinking water and things like that. Now, I still do have my cup of coffee every day, but on top of that, I have been drinking almost all water. I haven't had any soda, I don't think. Have I had any soda since then? Since I started this? <laughs> the few days that I've started it? I don't know. Anyway, okay, so somebody asked, and that's what the whole water thing is about and uh, why I'm trying to drink more water. I'm always trying to drink more water. I've been trying to drink more water since I was 17 years old, you know, and uh, my friend Tani and I, we always talk about, you know, we need to drink more water. And she always says, I need to drink, I, I need more, I need to, how does she say it? She's like, um, I need to get my waters in every day is how she says it. And so what I have been doing, and I've done this for a really, really long time, is I have a gallon, it's ever probably since I read this article, honestly, I have a gallon, a gallon, <laughs> I have a gallon of water in my refrigerator that I just fill with tap water. I have no issues with tap water. I drink tap water all the time. I don't need to know about the health concerns of tap water. So I just fill this gallon of water up before I go to bed at night, and then the next day when I get up, I try to drink as much of it as I can. And some days, you know, it's a fourth of the thing, and some days it's almost the whole thing. And so I just try to drink a lot of water I always have. So anyway, but I'm trying to make a committed effort in 2020 as one of my health changes, one of my lifestyle changes, to drink more water. So anyway, um, let me know if you guys do that, if, it's, if you've seen benefits from it, if it's helped you. I will say this. People always say to me, if you stopped drinking diet soda, if you got rid of all your diet soda, you would like drop 20 pounds in like two weeks. I don't know if it's because I really, I think people think I drink more soda than I do because I talk about fountain pops and stuff, whatever. But I really might only have like a fountain pop, like three nights a week or something like that. And I always typically get a diet Pepsi or a diet Coke, which I know is worse for you supposedly than regular Coke. Um, you guys are like, this is not the video that we expected today. I know, I'm just kind of rambling and talking. Uh, but you know, and, and then in like December and November, I was drinking like Dr. Pepper and things like that. So I was drinking drinks that were not healthy. But you know, like I have to say, I have given up soda for 30 days at a time, 60 days at a time, whatever, and diet soda, you know, as well, because that's typically what I drank. And have never lost any weight as a result from that. So I don't know what that is about. I don't know if that is advice for people that literally drink diet soda left and right, but for me, it has never really made a huge change, and I don't know what that's about. I know that aspartame is in diet soda, and that's why you shouldn't be drinking it, because it's not FDA approved, supposedly. Um, I know a couple years ago, I said something to my dad about it, and he's like, do you still drink diet soda? He was like, oh my god, it's so horrible for you. You shouldn't be drinking any of that. So, okay, let's get into the meditations for today. I'm 
giving the book that I read yesterday a break, okay? I think I need to revisit it maybe in a couple days and see what I think, but I'm gonna give it a break for the day because I just, I, that meditation really yesterday I did not like. So today I'm gonna read from the Daily Book of Positive Quotations. I probably did this a year ago. Um, let's see, today is January 21st. Letting go. Pick battles big enough to matter, small enough to win. Jonathan Kozel. I'm pulling my eye. I need my readers. The flip side of don't sweat the small stuff is... You guys, that is so weird, isn't it? Oh my God, the coincidences on this channel. And I'm not a big believer on uh, coincidences. The flip side of don't sweat the small stuff is fighting for the things we care about. At the same time, we should try to avoid battles we have absolutely no chance of winning. <laughs> this is, I have a funny story about this. In general, things that can help us be the person we most want to be are the things worth fighting for. Those that, do, those that don't have much impact or that may even detract from our best self need to be let go. Of the possible battles I may face today, which really matter, and of those that matter, which will make the biggest difference if I fight them. Um, so my father is somebody that is extremely calm, very peaceful, makes uh, educated response or educated responses to things. Yeah, um, he doesn't get like in arguments with people a lot. He just is very very calm. And my mother. Well, she was not. <laughs> she was the total opposite. And she always wanted to debate with somebody. She always, she wanted to be a trial attorney at one point in her life. She always argued with people. She would always, like, she did not pick her battles. And I remember I was having a conversation with my dad one time. We were talking on the phone. And this was honestly probably a couple years before my mom passed away. Just a couple years. And he said, I just want to, I just want to warn you. You sound like your mom. And your mom doesn't do a very good job of picking her battles. I think in the long run, you really need to take a look at, the, of your, at that part of yourself because it's going to hurt you down the road. And I really thought about what he said. And, you know, in my life, I have picked some wrong battles. I really have. I have picked battles that just really didn't bring me the need to be right rather than happy at the time really made me a miserable person. Today, I don't do that. One of the things I ask myself today when I'm going through something and I'm like, okay, is this a battle I want to fight, blah, 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 whatever, is I'll say, you know, to myself, okay, five years down the road, is this something that I'm going to look back on and I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm really glad that I like fa fought this? Or am I going to look back on it and I'm going to say to myself, like on my deathbed, I ask myself that a lot. I, I ask myself the deathbed question a lot about things. Like, if it's a risk that I want to take, or if it's something like a trip that I want to go on, or whatever, I'll ask myself, like, on my deathbed, you know, should I schedule this trip? Should I plan this trip? And I'll think, yeah, this is a trip I really want to go on. Like, I, this is something in my life that matters. Writing a book, that's something in my life that matters. You know, making videos, that's something in my life that matters. But the fights that I have, I look at, you know, the end of my life, and I think, when I look back on my life, will this be, like, one of those things I wish I had fought? Now, I will tell you in my history that there are things that I look back on that I fought that were pointless, that were stupid, and I wish I never had. And there are other things that I wish I had fought that I hadn't. Um, you know, and I think it's a tough question that we have to ask ourselves as we go through life. To me, I always ask myself, you know, because this is a sobriety thing, this is something that all of my sponsors have always said to me, probably... <laughs> It's probably not, the common denominator is probably not my sponsors. The common denominator is definitely me in this situation. But they've always asked me this recovery statement, and that is, would you rather be happy or would you rather be right? Okay? And I, whenever I say this, a, a couple people always get confused, and they're like, well, you know, but you are right, or sh I am right in this situation, and I do want to be validated. Validation is great, right? But if you seek validation constantly, the constant need to tell on somebody and tell your side and whatever, how happy are you really at the end of the day? Or is this a situation, and maybe it's not a situation that you can let go. You have to ask yourself that. But throughout our day, throughout our weeks and years, there are situations that arise that we fight for the need to be right, for the right to, we fight for the right to be right. And we fight for the need to be right when in actuality, we don't really have that need down the road looking back. I haven't at times. And if I had chosen to let it go and be happy, my happiness would have taken over. Um, I have had to in the last couple of years really look at a situation, you know, and say, do I, do I need to fight this? Do I need to let it go? Is this going to be a situation that's going to make me happy? Do I need to be right? Do I not need to be right? Whatever. And I've learned over time that my happiness, my peace, my serenity is a hundred times more valuable to me than being validated in a situation, the need to be right, whatever. And in most situations, you know, when I look back on them, 
at that time, I, I could not see the forest through the trees. At the time, like I was just talking about this prayer that my friend taught me on here. I think it was like a week ago I talked about this because it was right after my meeting, so it would have been last Wednesday. You know, she shared with me this a prayer that our sponsor had taught her, and the prayer is help me to see, see uh, let me help me to see this from a new perspective, or help me to see this, you know, in a different way, um, from a new set of eyes, so to speak. And I really like that, you know. The dogs just tore through here, so I had to stop the camera. Um, you know, when I look back on my life, there have been times in my life when I felt so sure that I knew I was in the right. And then I look back on it, like, you know, two years down the road, a year down the road, five years down the road, and I'm like, no, you really weren't, you know? And, and you really had a part in this, and you really need to take some ownership over what happened, because it didn't have to be like that. And I look back on those times, and, you know, those are teaching moments for me going forward when I'm sitting in a situation like that to ask myself, you know, is this a situation where I would really like to uh, maybe look at this in a different perspective? Look at it, you know, in a, in a new way, so to speak, like I just said, you know? And going forward, like, that's a lesson I've really learned that I want to learn at, you know, I want to learn at, that I want to learn that when I'm going through something, ask myself, A, is this a battle worth fighting? B, would I rather be happy? Would I rather be right? And C, when I look back on this, is it going to matter to me? Because so many things when I look back on just didn't matter. They just didn't, you know? Um, I was going to read another uh, one of the Don't Sweat the Small Stuffs and It's All Small Stuff today by Richard Carlson, but I think I'm gonna wait until tomorrow. So I'm gonna let you guys go here, and um, if you wanna hear more of my beliefs about the world, go check out my vlog. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.